we start the, uh, the topic uh, with this issue here. Uh, this issue is basically saying that uh, uh, right now uh, in our flood queue editor, we have to long press or double tap to sh show the menu. Uh, uh, while in iOS, actually, you just uh, tap, uh, j just like, uh, just tap, right? No need for long press or double tap. Uh, this video is trying to explain the workflow right now for the current behavior, uh, how it works, why we are using, uh, how the code is using long press uh, and the double tap. Uh, it's a little bit difficult uh, given the code structure to uh, to do it with single tap. I'll explain it later. Here, uh, it's called a menu. <laughs> In the code, it's actually called a toolbar. Flutter comes with toolbar. So this toolbar is different than the, the editor's toolbar, okay? We, we talked about the, the editor's toolbar before. So this toolbar is actually uh, Flutter's built-in class. If you see this uh, up top, uh, up right corner, this one, this is the toolbar. You can see like a cut or uh, let me see if other example, like if you hide uh, half of, uh, you select some text. So this cut, copy, paste. So this is our toolbar. So this is Flutter's class toolbar options. So you have copy, cut, paste, select all. The default, you have uh, four options. You can turn it on or off. In the code, you can also, in our code, you can also try to, if you search for toolbar option, you can also find the such case. So you can specify toolbar option. So you, basically here, right, we made it true. So again, this, this toolbar is different than the editor's toolbar, okay? <laughs> or you can interpret as menu. So here, uh, we can check if this is enabled, right? And uh, if you look at it here, so this is in the mixing, we define, so first uh, we in, if we enable the cut and also in read-only mode, we we cannot do cut, right? Uh, in read-only mode, you can do copy, but in read-only mode, you cannot do paste because you cannot modify it, right? But in read-only mode, you can select all. So that's the difference. Basically, in read-only, you cannot cut. You cannot uh, you cannot paste, right? Okay. You cannot modify the content. Uh, that's toolbar. So in here, uh, in the de dele delegate class, we have show toolbar method being called. So this is the main thing I want to explain here. Uh, so first, uh, if you look at the workflow, so, uh, how it works is, uh, so basically right now the logic, uh, how it works is de dependent on the sequence of those being executed. So note that uh, when you call tap down, we will, uh, in the very beginning, we handle tap down and we decide right on the tap, tap down, we decided if we should show toolbar, given the kind, right? So basically, it's, uh, if it's the touch device, like iPad, iPhone, or stylus, we will show toolbar, okay? Uh, because like if in a web, right? When you click on it, you don't show the toolbar, right? Uh, so given this, so, Knows that uh, the sequence of event, the order of the event is very important here. So when you do tap on tap down, we first decide if we should show toolbar. Then, uh, because uh, during the tap down, it's, it's possible you you will be long pressing, right? Or it could be. Uh, like a double tap, it could happen, right? Because uh, you might tap twice. There are logic to calculate if this is a double tap. So basically the logic is that uh, when we first do the tap down, we decide this and uh, later when we decide, when we determine it's a force press or 
like a force press end, right? Or it's single long tap, or it's a double tap. We will show the toolbar. Also note that here in the raw editor, if you are changing the text, uh, uh, basically when you're making a selection, so this method is when you uh, select, when you change the selection of the text, right? This will happen. So note that we are calling scheduler to schedule something to happen later, right? So basically, it's, uh, here it all says, right? So the selection overlay uh, will be refreshed after, actually after the, the first tap down. So the tap down happened, then we schedule something to uh, update the overlay. So here in the overlay, we uh, kind of like decided to update the selection overlay. Basically, the the, the selection range, right? So we update the selection over where we can show the toolbar. So given this logic, if we, we cannot, we have to show toolbar after this happen. So basically, uh, the sequence will be that during right on, on the tap tap down, we decide this is boolean, and then what happened is here, uh, when you make a change, uh, text editing value here, you can try to add a breakpoint to debug this process, and then we decide to show toolbar. Uh, if it's uh, enabled, then we show toolbar. Uh, we can we can focus on the double tap overflow, right? So basically on the second tab, when you release your finger, we'll show the toolbar. And because in the, tool, uh, in the toolbar, in the show toolbar method, here, let me go to it. In the show toolbar method, we needed the selection overlay. Note that this happened after uh, after in the raw editor, we actually updated the to, uh, overlay. Remember, uh, we were we were looking at that. Uh, give me a sec. Remember here, right? When you change it, your selection, we updated the overlay. So that's why uh, the sequence that uh, when, so basically, before you call show toolbar, you have to have already updated the selection overlay. Otherwise, those, this will not be correct. And then you may get it now and do nothing. If the selection overlay is now, you don't show the toolbar. We just return false. Otherwise, then if the selection overlay is correctly updated, then we can show the toolbar. So that's how the current workflow uh, works for the, the show toolbar logic.